prismatic ending the token. You got it. Works perfectly fine for me. <sighs> Crazy question. Do we even play Titan here, or do we try to go one more turn so we can potentially have a creature in play to sacrifice to a Liliana Minus? All right, guys, we are coming straight into match two here off of the heels of a very short round of one. So if you want to go check out that video to get the full information on this deck, the card choices, what's changed, and also to see exactly how that match went down, then go check out match one. Link will be in the description below, as per the usual with all my videos. And yeah, let's just jump straight in here for match two. All right, let's hop in here. See if we can get a match where Relic of Progenitus will be just bonkers. On the play again, love it. We'll obviously click yes. We got a turn one Saga hand. No bounce land, but Garen Rig speeds this up a little bit. Hmm. I think it's probably worth keeping. This is going to be one of those turn three Dryad, turn four Titan kind of hands if we don't find a bounce land. I guess if we find a bounce land and a either a Zusa or a Titan off the top, then we can pack for the missing piece and play a turn three Titan with Amulet here and maybe play Dryad post-combat. Something to think about. Opponent Mulligan six. No companion revealed. Interesting. Well, we definitely need to lead on Saga, especially if our opponent's playing something aggressive like Hammer Time. Getting Amulet into play as fast as possible is probably going to be the best thing for this hand. Letting our Titan come out a turn ahead of schedule, quite possibly, and allowing us to do all the things we need to do. So now we can pack for Azusa if we draw a Bounce Land and have a turn three Titan. So for that reason, we want to play the Garen Brig to enable that line. Of course, we would be able to float with a Saga, sacrifice, get an Amulet, play Bounce Land, use the one floating with the Saga, to for the third mana to play an Azusa that we pack for. Play Bounce Land, Bounce Land, activate Garen Brig, cast Titan. Smallpox, you say? So it looks like we're playing against a black pox type strategy, obviously. So the most important thing is going to be chaining sagas into amulets here so that even if we have a very low amount of lands, we'll be able to use bounce lands to produce a ton of mana. So the card that we want to discard here is probably just... It could even just be Dryad, admittedly, uh, because we can just pack for Azusa to try to enable Titan, but I mean, that might be a little far down the line, especially considering our opponent has showed us a Savai Triome, which is a bit of an unusual one. It's less likely to be something like like an 8-rack style deck. I don't know. We'll see, though. I think Cavern is the safest one to pitch, as it's the most awkward land that we have. Talari West, we can transmute for a bounce land or something. Obviously, we want to keep the Saga in play here so we can set up an Amulet. Yeah, we would like to top deck a Bounce Land, a green Bounce Land in particular. That would be the best draw. Another Dryad isn't really doing much. We'll float the mana. We don't really have a reason to, but we will. We'll get Amulet, and we'll play a land, and we'll pass. I guess we could have gotten Expedition Map and cracked it for another Saga, but I, I don't think that really matters. Land. Pass. Okay. Bounce Land? No. Well, I mean, we're obviously going to play Saga here, trying to set up another amulet so that when we do top deck a bounce land, we'll be able to just slam Titan. This also lets us start making some intermediary threats here if we get to untap with all of our lands in play. Meaning if our opponent doesn't have another smallpox, of course. Grazer. All right. Hmm. I think we are meant to play out the Talari West here. And I think it would be better to keep cards in hand in case our opponent is playing the rack and just use Saga to make a token here, rather than commit a Dryad to the board. With Double Amulet, we'll be able to easily get Titan into play, and probably a Dryad as well. So I'm not really concerned about putting these things into play. I'm more concerned about extracting as much value out of what we have in play as possible, and that includes activating Saga twice if we get the chance to do so. And the question is, are we setting up a map for Bounce Land here off of our Saga, or are we getting a second Amulet? I think... The longer this game goes, the better it favors us. Because anytime we top deck a bounce land, we'll be able to just do the Titan thing. No bounce land. So I think we're probably supposed to just activate and get a second amulet here. And our opponent will have to beat our board. And if we ever top deck a bounce land, it's just over. So I'm going to go with the amulet. We'll swing four. See if our opponent has answers for these constructs that we got for free. Because Urza Saga is just a crazy land. And we'll pass. All 
All right, bounce land? Nope. I mean, we'll play that out. We'll go straight to combat, because there's no reason to do anything else just yet. We'll swing with our constructs. Our opponent takes a lot of damage. I don't see a reason not to just slam a dryad at this point, so we'll do that and pass. Yeah, our opponent has played one non-land card this whole time, so I'm very confused. We see a black. <laughs> if this is like a Thoughties or something, they're going to have quite the sight to see. There's literally no way they could stop us from playing a Titan here if they thought sees us and we top deck a bounce land. Or they thought sees themselves. So they're about to persist Archon of Cruelty into play. Okay. That explains what they've been waiting for this whole time, but I think this Archon is a little too little too late. We sack the Dryad, attack with both of these. Ooh, no, we don't quite have lethal here. We'd be one short because they're going to go to five from the Archon trigger here, right? Yeah, they gain three life. So we could just sack the Construct so we can just kill them with Valakut triggers and something like that. If we do top deck the Bounce Land, if we don't draw a Bounce Land, then what? Probably swing with both of these. They block the Construct, take two down to three. We play Dryad. Sack one of the Dryads if they attack. And then potentially have lethal that way. Nah. And it's really close. I think we're supposed to sack a Construct here, though, to be honest. We'll pitch a Summoner's Pact, I suppose. Those are kind of redundant. And we know that our opponent's hand contains only Flagstones. No? I thought we got to see their whole hand. That's weird. Oh, they drew cards from the Archon. They drew a card from the Archon, of course. And they played the Flagstones as well, so... Alright, we'll untap. Draw. Bounce land? This is going to be a great matchup for Relic of Progenitus, by the way. Well, if we swing both and they block, and we play Dryad, and they attack, we sack. Man, this is not a great position to be in at all. We could just play the Grazer out here as something to sack the Archon. I think that makes very little sense, though. All right, we'll just play the Dryad, and again, we'll, we'll be back to hoping that we top deck a Bounce land. Uh... Is there a point in attacking? I don't think there is. Probably have to discard the Summoner's Pact again here. Sacking a Dryad, perhaps, as the Construct does more damage? Sure. I guess a Bounce Land would also allow us to potentially activate Sun Home here for lethal that way. Double strike this, and that would be exactly eight. Doesn't play around them having a removal spell of some sort, but... They push the token, okay. Lily minus on our Dryad, huh? Okay, bounce land off the top one time, please. Bounce land. There we go, cool. All right, we'll yield, or make sure we have no yields set. And yeah, we just have lethal here. I guess we might consider playing around path. We could probably get double Titan into play here. Yeah, we should be able to do that. So we'll play Primeval Titan. We'll get Bounce Land in any other land. I suppose Valakut, because why not? Get Growth Chamber Valakut, and then we'll be able to play our second Titan, and we'll be able to haste both, and that plays around path, and they will be dead. <laughs> Very timely to top deck this. I was afraid that we would just never find it. And we'll pick up the Talari West, I suppose. Second Titan. We'll hit yes. This one will get Boros Garrison and Slayer Stronghold. If I can click it. There we go. And our opponent scoops it up. Whew. Pretty lucky of us to win a game one here. If they had just gone turn one thought, sees themselves, turn two, persist the Archon into play, we probably would have just straight up lost on the spot. So. Alright, against our opponent, we're going to want Veil of Summers for their Thoughtseize effects, in case they're targeting us. We're going to want Relic of Progenitus to try to stop their reanimator shenanigans. Um, yeah, I think that's about it. I guess they could be playing the two-mana creature that lets them reanimate stuff, in which case Dismember could be okay, but I don't know, I'm not really sold on it. And this matchup, Explore seems alright. It, it seems very good if they're more on the pox type of strategy, but Explore is very slow against reanimator stuff, so... 
Like, Explore doesn't really do anything against the reanimator stuff. Although, I guess it does let us power out a Titan through extra land drops if we have more than one amulet in play without having to have creatures in play, as we might not be able to have creatures in play against Archon, but I don't know. That seems very unlikely. You trim on Cavern here. Razor seems very good against them, just in general. It helps us play around smallpox, and it gives us something worthless, unfortunately. Sorry, Grazer, to sacrifice to their Archon, so that seems good. We could trim a Pact, but having redundant Titan top decks seems good, so we'll just trim another Explore here. And a Radiant Fountain seems pretty irrelevant. Maybe the Breeding Pool? Maybe? I don't know. It could be a single Summoner's Pact. I don't know that I love that, though. That might be the best choice, though. We don't want to die to them having Field of Ruin or something, but I kind of doubt that's ever going to happen. I'll just trim another Explore, because we have Veil Summers to try to help us not get got by this card. So maybe maybe we should just be bringing in two Veils here and keeping two Explores or something like that. I don't know. Let me know what you would do in the comments below. Alrighty, we're on the draw now, of course. <laughs> If our opponent goes turn one thought sees themselves, and we just go turn one relic path, and they just immediately persist because they can exile the thought sees to our relic, that would be pretty tragic. This hand would be amazing on the play because they probably just go turn one thought sees us, and we already have the forest up to Veil of Summer at that point. But on the draw, this hand's a little weak. I think we're actually supposed to mulligan this. It's likely that these Veil of Summers will do nothing. Although I guess if they thought sees us and take a Veil. Then we still have another Veil to pre prevent them from thoughts using us again. As weird as that is, but this is going to be a very slow against a Reanimator draw as well. I think we're just supposed to mulligan here. Well, um, this hand is interesting. It's lacking an Amulet for sure, but I think we try it. Either bottom a Grazer or a Titan. I think it's probably best to bottom a Grazer here. Second Grazer lets us play around Archon and Smallpox, but I'm not really worried about it. We just lead on Marsh Flats Pass. Interesting. Hmm. So, if we lead on Grazer and put in a Bounce Land here, then we get just completely destroyed by Smallpox. So I'd rather just play the Forest and hold up Veil here. Not because I'm afraid of Discard Spell necessarily, but because losing our creature and our Bounce Land to Smallpox would just be unbelievably bad. So we can't allow that to happen. I'd rather play the Growth Chamber and then Grazer in a Forest this upcoming turn and have a less important land to sacrifice to Smallpox. And this also allows us to spike this Thought Seize, <laughs> which is fantastic for us, obviously. All right. So we'll play the Growth Chamber, we'll flow to green, and we'll pick up the Forest, and then we'll Grazer in the Forest. And this way, if our opponent plays Smallpox, we have to sacrifice the Grazer, which is unfortunate, but we get to keep a Bounce Land in place, so we don't, like, get time locked, basically. See if our opponent has Liliana here. Have vindicate the Growth Chamber. Okay. I mean, yikes, but okay. Playing Growth Chamber here would play into a second Vindicate, so and it would also play into Smallpox again, so I'm just going to play the Garen Dragon Pass. Hopefully we top like an untapped source. I don't know, actually. Pacting for a 3-drop and putting it into play here might be very weak to both Vindicate and Smallpox, so probably Pacting for a 3-drop would not be a good play here. There's Smallpox. We've been trying to play around it this whole time. There's a reason why. There is a reason why. I think we just pitched the Pact at this point. We could pitch a Titan. That would be weak to them having Surgical Extraction, but... I mean, if they have Surgical, I think it's fine. We need redundant copies of Bounce Lands, not only because they can't take them with Inquisition, but also because we will need to be able to either pro progressively make our land drops or have a Bounce Land in hand for Amulet Shenanigans. So I think discarding a Titan is defensible here. Maybe discarding the Pact is better. I think discarding the Titan is better because the, the Pact could enable us to get a 3-drop into play at some point in time. And obviously we're keeping Garen Rig because it enables us to make one extra mana for casting Titan. Of course, taking 4 into 6 is way better than just having a basic forest. Hopefully our opponent doesn't play Mages of the Moon or something crazy. Castle Lockthorn is a cool one. Definitely have lost to that card several times. And here we'll make the same play that we made before, putting our Castle back into play here after we play this Grazer so that we can play around Smallpox. We'll pass. Really glad they didn't have a Lili Liliana of the Veil at this point, but they activate Lockley. That's very good for us. That is very good for us. 
amulet. That is also very good for us. So here we just play the amulet and pass. And next turn we can just tighten them. So if they small pox us and we sack, I guess, the Garen Brig, then a Grazer or Azusa off the top will let us tighten regardless. We just need them not to reanimate this turn. Smallpox. Okay. Yeah, I think we're supposed to sack the Garen Brig here. Ooh, we have to discard one. I guess it has to be the Summoner's Pact. Okay, never mind. So, I forgot that we'd have to discard a card, so we're not going to be able to tighten this upcoming turn, I don't think. Any land off the top would be fantastic. No! They have Liliana, too! Okay. Well, this is bad. We have to discard the Titan here. Sucks, but it's true. Yeah, I don't know if we can beat this Liliana, to be honest. Well, land is not bad here. I think we do have to play it, actually, and just let our bounce land get eaten up by the Liliana uptick. We don't really have much of a choice there. Douthy Voidwalker. Yikes, okay. That's a good one to know about, though. Or is it Saga? That's a very good one. We'll play it and pass. Okay. I mean, we're about to just get Lily ulted anyway, so not much we can do about it. Tlari left. Interesting. If we transmute Tlari West for Bounce Land, we can play it, activate Saga, pick up a land, and then they Lily ult us and keep the most amount of mana. I doubt that we'd be able to play a Titan the turn after. And then if they just uptick, then we have two constructs from the Saga. They might even minus make a sacrifice. Interesting. I think transmuting for Bounce Land makes the most sense here. Did we side out the Breeding Pool? We did not. Yeah, I think transmuting for Bounce Land makes the most sense here. So, well sacrifice this and get the breeding pool which is part of the reason why the breeding pool is in the deck by the way is for exactly situations like this we'll yield it to the amulet we'll transmute here not play transmute different things uh and i guess we just get sanctuary nah we'll get the last remaining growth chamber as if our opponent finds yet another smallpox then we'll have blue to transmute with in play We'll activate this here. And I guess we're just picking up the breeding pool. Picking up Saga seems horrible. Whatever we pick up might just get discarded as well. So I'm going to leave the Saga in play. We'll pick up the breeding pool. If they literally minus us, then we can float mana with our Saga, sack it, get a second amulet. And if we top deck a Titan, we can just play it. So... When I say Lily minus, I mean them making a sacrifice, not the minus six. That would that would be a different scenario. I suppose this also means that if they try to split non-lands versus lands, we can shock in Breeding Pool and immediately cast Titan. So we'll see how they split this. Hmm. And if this is the split, we'd have to top deck Titan and Bounce Land for the top pile to be relevant. We choose a pile to sacrifice. I think drawing any land and a Titan is more likely than drawing specifically a Bounce Land and a Titan, especially considering we have four fewer Bounce Lands than would usually be the case, as we've already gone through like all four Growth Chambers. So we want to sacrifice the Amulet and the Saga, I think. They swing. We can't block anyways, so we can clock them back, though, if we want to. Looks like they might just be passing. Yep. T West. Interesting. Well, we could transmute for a Saga and play it. That really wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. 
I think it might be our best option here. As transmuting for anything else, like a summoner's pack or whatever, plays into discard spells. And this also lets us play a land this turn, so that means that if we top deck a titan, we can cast it. So, assuming they don't make us discard the breeding pool somehow. And I am swinging with this construct. Going in. Take the damage. They didn't even activate castle, huh? Maybe they just had a yield set? I don't know. Seems weird to me that they would not activate. This lets them, or this makes them lose life equal to the number of cards in hand, so I guess they would have lost four. Could be relevant. A prismatic ending the token. You got it. Works perfectly fine for me. Alright, we'll draw. Dryad. Well, we can play Dryad and still activate Saga, so that's nice. We'll definitely do that. I think we are supposed to take the damage here. This puts us dead to two Dalphy hits, but... I don't know. Maybe it's a mistake. Whatever. We'll roll with it. Yeah, maybe shocking to get this Dryad into play was a horrible ch choice. Uh, that's a boil. Why is our opponent playing Boil? <laughs> Especially against us. But, okay. Definitely should not have played the Dryad. Hindsight's twenty twenty though. <laughs> I did not expect that. Yeah, Boil is not a great card against the Amulet because it relies on specifically Dryad. I think even without the Boil, we are probably still winning, uh, still losing this game thanks to this Dalphy, but yeah, that's all I can say about it. Play our land, and we're dead to the Shadow and the Dalphy because we can't block it. So, all right, so we lose this game. That's fine. And, yeah, I don't know if there's anything we want to change about our strategy here. We could bring in Dismembers for the Dalphy, but Dismembers are kind of a horrible thing to top deck in general. They didn't seem to have any other permanents that we need to care about. I guess Explosives could deal with a Liliana or a Dalphy, so for that reason, maybe Explosives is fine. The Grazers seem a lot worse than I last evaluated them as. The Relics don't seem that... I mean, they did reanimate in game one against us. I don't know. It would be hard to play around it, but I think maybe Relic is worth holding on to here. Do we want more Explorers? I feel like we do, actually, seeing more of their strategy. Explorer seems very good. We trim a Summoner's Pack, although trimming more than that would be pretty ridiculous, in my opinion. Uh, we could even trim a Dryad, as it just plays into all the removal spells. We're almost never going to win with Dryad plus Valakut, but that might be a little crazy. Nah, I think we probably want the Dryad. Hmm. We could trim a Basic Forest. I'm not a huge fan of that, either. We gotta turn one here. I don't know what it should be. Maybe it should just be a Valakut, actually. As, like I said, we're unlikely to be winning with Dryad plus Valakut, so... Like, they'll just have removal spells or discard spells for days to take our Dryads, so... Having more Explorers to Cantrip and try to find what we need and maybe even power out a Titan seems a lot better, so we'll be on the play here. Hmm. We get to play a turn one tap Garen Brig and then turn two Relic and a Bounce Land and expose ourselves to Smallpox, which seems horrendous. Hmm. If one of these was an Amulet, I would consider it because we could then play Bounce Land with the Amulet out and explore on turn two, but... As is, I'm not really a big fan of this hand. Mulligating seems a little weak, though. Relic is very good against their reanimator strategy, if that's what they're trying to do. They also could just top deck an untapped source off the top. This one's kind of rough. Multiple bounce lands is good against discard spells. It gives us effectively extra cards in hand. I don't know, it's kind of close. I'm going to keep it. It plays really poorly in a smallpox, but uh, maybe we'll just top deck the land and be fine. So that's the hope. Here comes the Thoughtseize. No. Land. Urza Saga. Yes. Yes. All right. Do we just explore here or do we play out the Relic? I feel like playing out the Relic is not super useful at the moment. I think I'd rather explore and get it out of our hand. So. It so also lets us start playing out these bounce lands that otherwise might be a liability, so that's nice. Bale of Summer. 
Well, it would have been nice to be able to hold that one up, but uh, too bad it was one card down, huh? Now, I guess actually we did want to draw the Saga this turn, so. All right, let's play the Sanctuary and pick up maybe even just the Saga, admittedly. I don't hate that at all. We're not in any rush to get Amulet into play or anything like that, and we don't want our Saga to get disenchanted or something crazy. I don't know. Dalfi. Yikes, okay. Well, at least we have Veil of Summer to prevent us from getting Thoughtseize punked here. And, yeah, we'll play out the Saga again. We'll play Relic and Map this turn. Sure. And at end of turn, if our opponent doesn't make us fire off this Veil, we can Map for an untap land and be able to immediately cast Titan. I assume they're going to play Vindicate or something that we want to Veil of Summer here. <laughs> it would be really funny if they played Smallpox. Liliana of the Veil, perhaps. That wouldn't be the end of the world. N Whoa! Target opponent. Search target opponents. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, yeah, in response to your surgical extraction or titan effect, how about this Veil of Summer right here? Woo! Nice. Alright, we'll let this go. And by that, I mean completely counter it. Do we want to crack this relic to try to find our untapped source off the top? I think that we do. It's weak to our opponent having specifically land the Entomb card that lets them put a creature in their graveyard and then persisting, but... All right, untap land. There we go. Okay, not too bad, not too bad. <sighs> Crazy question. Do we even play Titan here, or do we try to go one more turn so we can potentially have a creature in play to sacrifice to a Liliana Minus? Because if we play Titan here and get some lands or whatever... Our opponent can just play Liliana and make a sacrifice and even be able to play the Titan. Veil of Summer prevents them from having Liliana to make a sacrifice. It also plays around them having a Thoughtseize effect this upcoming turn or even another Necromantra, so we wouldn't have to worry about that. I think it's probably better to just slam Dryad. We can play Forest, Dryad, Garenbrig, activate Saga for a token and just have like everything covered. And if they make us a Veil of Summer, then we don't really care about the token. We'll be able to get... Battlecut triggers the upcoming turn and not have to worry about them putting Titan into play with Dalphy. I think it's probably the best line. So let's slam the Dryad here. And we'll play the castle and plan to either Veil Summer plus activate Map or to activate Saga on instep. Probably best to just hold up Veil Summer the whole time though. Like if they do nothing and just pass here, I'd probably activate Map and hold up Veil Summer just to play around whatever they could have, like a Fatal Push or whatever. Although I guess that wouldn't even matter that much, but... Man, that was a very good Veil of Summer. That was a very good Veil of Summer. <laughs> I wasn't expecting to hit Necromentia. That I can say for sure. Smallpox? That would be... Wild. Dowsley Voidwalker definitely does not play very well with Smallpox, that's for sure. Maybe they sided them out so they could have Dalfies during these games. I don't know. Liliana. If they minus us, we can Veil Summer the minus and not have to sacrifice Dryad either. And that would also prevent them later on in this turn from thought seizing us because it would we would have Hexproof until end of turn. Vindicate. Do we care about this? I feel like there's no reason not to care about this. We'll Veil it. I can't think of anything that goes wrong by casting Veil here. I'll tell you what, Veil is very good against Vindicate as well. <laughs> and our opponent is probably just about to lose the game. Very sad for them, I suppose. If we map for Valakut and play it as the first thing we do and they have Fatal Push, we could map for Fetch Land. Then in response to the Titan, they just Fatal Push the Dryad and so it doesn't really play around much. Hmm. We could map for a Saga, or we could just not even use the map. I think it's probably right to map for Valakut here, and just to not play around them having Fatal Push. Although they haven't really had a good chance to use it yet, but let's go ahead and get the Valakut in play. Amulet. That one's very good. Oh, we needed to float there. 
I mean, we didn't really need to, but it would have been nice to do so. Let's just get a second amulet, I suppose. We'll start... Oh, we're not going to get Valkut triggers immediately off of playing this Valkut, so it's kind of awkward. All right, let's play Amulet. Five to make sure we have no yields, and we'll play Valkut. On tap here, float a green. On tap, float a green. I feel like our opponent's f6 here. All right, I'm going to activate Garenbrig, leaving the white floating so that we can get Valakut and Slayer Stronghold off of our Titan ETB, and that way they need to kill both the Titan and the Dryad. All right, opponent just scoops it up. Whew, very dynamic match there. That was a lot of fun, and we definitely, definitely saw the strength of Veil vale Summer in this match. That is for sure. And to be honest, I can't say that that's not exactly what I was hoping Veil vale Summer would do against these discard strategies, things that want to kill our permanents. That's what Veil vale is good against. And if that just gives you any little taste for the card, then you just wait for the next couple matches, as I guarantee you there will be more to come. So, anyways, if you like this content, support me in the ways that you can. Leave a like, comment, subscribe, especially that last one, subscribing. I know many of you who watch my videos are not subscribed. Why would you go and do something like that? Just kidding, obviously. I don't mind. I'm glad for anyone who watches my videos, subscribed or not. But if you want to show your support, then go ahead and subscribe. And I will see you guys in the next video. This is Red Face Menace. Signing off.